Good morning. Today on this Tuesday, the 16th week in Ordinary Time. This week, we're not celebrating the full mass uh, with our technicians on vacation, and but I wanted to have the opportunity to just be able to uh, share uh, a message from the readings today. So I'll read the, the scriptures and share a brief message like I normally do. Again, today is the, the Tuesday of the 16th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the children of Israel marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall on their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the lords cast through the column of uh, cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a, a glance that threw it into panic, and so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians with their chariots and their charioteers. So, Jesus, so Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at the dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army that had followed the children of Israel into, into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. For the children of Israel had marched on dry land though the, through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and behold the great power, beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. At the breath of your anger, the waters piled up. The flowing waters stood like a mound. The flood waters congealed in the midst of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue and overtake them. I will divide the spoils and have my fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall despoil them. When you went, when your wind blew, the sea covered them. Like lead, they sank into the mighty waters. When you stretched out your hand, the, the earth swallowed them, and you brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands established. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak with you. But he said in reply to the one who told him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my heavenly father is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> the heart of Christianity is a relationship, but relationships are not determined by bloodlines. Think about it. Being related to someone doesn't mean I have a relationship with them. We know we can have siblings who never talk to each other. You have aunt, uh, you know, uh, uh, uncles and aunts and nieces and nephews that maybe never communicate. Uh, there is no relationship, uh, but they are related. You, that can be you know, biologically proven. 
Sometimes parents are in their children's lives and sometimes they're not. Sometimes children have a great relationship with their parents and sometimes they're completely alienated. And it's tragic. It's, you know, because the bloodlines alone do not a relationship make. You know, for us, you know, Jesus, to everyone's surprise then, when asked, you know, when told about his mothers and quote unquote brothers, really cousins, the surprise when he says, ask the question, well, who's my mother? Who's my brothers? He's making this pointing it very clear that what makes, you know, is Mary his mother? Of course she is. But she's ultimately, but ultimately, as she is also a disciple of Jesus. That what scripture, the little scripture says about Mary, what is very clear, it says, blessed is she who believed that, God, that God's words would be fulfilled. She trusted him. She followed him. And that is ultimately, that is, it is her relationship with him, not simply as biologically, but her relationship with him as a disciple. And that's what makes us, again, toward the family of God. Again, as we see that, um, again, as God uh, calls us into, you know, into relationship, uh, when I think, again, we continue to read from the book of Exodus and we see, again, the, you know, the, the tragic uh, you know, deaths of, of, of the Egyptians, uh, that ultimately, you know, I can remember my first play I went to as a child in elementary school it was a play here in D.C., and it was entitled, Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God. You know, ultimately, and Pharaoh found out the hard way in the Egyptians, and oftentimes we found out the hard way too, haven't we? When we defied God, we said, no, I'm not doing his commandments, no, I'm not going to follow him, no, I'm going to do it my way, and we fell on our faces and experienced the consequences. And the smartest thing we could ever do is just give in, you know, let just you know, receive, you know, trust him, follow him, and, and, and embrace the invitation to be a member of his family. As a son, a daughter, as a mother, father, as a in relationship with Jesus, that, you know, it takes a lot of energy to box with God. And it's a, it's a contest we will never win. And we should not ever want to win that contest. In fact, maybe we be among those that Jesus identifies definitely as his relatives not because of our bloodline, but because of our faith. Amen.